you want to show us and tell us some stories about the house today? For sure. sure. We'd like you to, well, we'd like to do this because um, the house has been very special to us for 46 years. In fact, it's hard to believe living anywhere else. It's almost our entire married life that we've been here. We bought it on our first anniversary, actually. We closed, we passed papers on this house on April 11, 1977, and we'd been married exactly one year to the day. Um, Before that, yeah. Yeah. So... And uh, we passed papers, and we drove in the car here. And you had a hammer. I had put a hammer in the uh, in the car because we knew that there was a wall here when we uh, bought the house, wall separating what had been the original kitchen, but had been turned into a bedroom at some point in the '40s, we think. And, and it was like a long, long galley kitchen on that side. Galley kitchen that we hated. So I. Took the hammer and Ellen and I went in the kitchen and I drove the hammer. <laughs> Started right hammering down the wall, wall. like right Just that day. Bashed a hole in it, and we spent a good number of years uh, working yeah, on this kitchen. Yeah, that started. That really started our renovation in this kitchen over here. Like now, there's this brick wall over here, and um, there was a broom closet over here. And this was behind a wall. And again, we just started taking it down. We didn't even know what was behind it, like that there was the, the, uh, the shape of this um, fireplace. There was a flue here. Um, and we just started chiseling away at getting this wall down um, and seeing what was behind it. That's what we did first. We took, uh, we took down things and we opened it up. And of course, there was this studs in here. And we engaged a, uh, a carpenter contractor um, we got um, structural engineers to give us this, the information we needed and we had to file. And uh, he arranged to uh, put up the beam that was needed to replace, to replace the wall. And the, car the carpenter was a wonderful guy named Dan Klein. And he, uh, he had used 100-year-old hundred re-sawn timber, yeah, which like he had this... gotten from factories that were being torn down and up on it, the North Shore. It all had, like the color of it has much more resin in it. It's much kind of more golden color because at that time they still had the tar in the, in, in the, in the wood. We were trying to do it sort of in the spirit of, of, of an old house, of a Victorian house. We wanted it, although we wanted to make it modern, we also wanted to keep it kind of in keeping with how houses were done at that time. Well, um, we wanted to respect like it's sort of respect, respect the, the integrity and, of and the, the house. the integrity, exactly. Yeah. So, so even things like over here where we have um, the, these panels that we left natural, um, these were from the wainscoting that we took down on the wall in here. So this, this room has been the center, of our, the center of our activity and the center of our lives. And it's been wonderful to work in and to play yeah. in and to, certainly to eat in. This is where... Our family was. This is where yeah, we we did much, homework. We did correcting. Yeah, we did all. We ate dinner together every night. We um, right. I would say I mean even when Jared, our our younger child, our Jack, we have Alex and Jared. Jared, we had his crib set up like right here so that the playpen, the playpen. his playpen, so that he could be part of our sort of our dinner conversations. And the kids, we had dinner together every night at this table, Always. and lots of lots of holiday meals where everybody cooked. It was like a battalion of people cooking and doing different things. Right. And it was the heart of a, just a, a house that was welcoming and full of hospitality, which is the way we wanted to have it. Yeah. One of the things we did when we got the house was this room, this was a separate room, had a lowered ceiling with panels in it. Uh, sort so of like a 1950s rumpus room. Like, drop, I don't know. A that drop be ceiling. Like a drop ceiling. So we took, Which we, we popped like. up the panels and underneath it was just a broken up ceiling and there's a set of pipes leading to the bathroom upstairs wrapped in towels because they were, we knew there was a, there was a very slow leak. So it's bad. <laughs> really so, bad. All right. So we needed to deal with that. And then we decided, okay, what are we going to put back up? We did not want to drop ceiling. So, um, again, because we had been like trying to restore the house and there we had seen in these magazines that there were places you could still get stamped tin from the companies that were making it in the 1800s. There were like two companies, two companies left, one in Brooklyn and one in 
Somewhere in the Midwest. In, Mo- in, like in Iowa, Oklahoma, Norman, Florida. Oklahoma. And we na- thought now Brooklyn these, was a little closer. These panels are made a lot of different places uh, in the United States and elsewhere. But, but then so our, they were The electrician who was helping us to rewire, and we had to rewire the entire house, the entire house. He lent us his truck, and we drove down to Brooklyn, picked up the panels. The Meanwhile, tin, Richard tin was tin driving this truck. He had never driven a truck before. This is a big truck, like an 18-wheeler. No. I think it was. No, it was, no, no, no. Never. It was big. Um, it was big to you, but it was, a, it was an electrician. Don't, don't tell. Don't do not it say was that. A, it was not. It was an anyway, electrician's truck. It was a big truck. And these panels came in sheets that are like two feet by eight feet. So really long, and Richard had to build underneath this like lathing strips that on the could... on the old ceiling. I had to build a a, a grid of of lath la- lathing strips of running in both directions. It's the way you'd see ceilings now done, and they just put wallboard up. But instead of wallboard, um, I worked up a system where these two foot by eight feet long strips. I held up one end with my head and, and I, I had the nails the in my mouth. And I was on the other end, Richard. And had I had made a, this, a, a kind of like a, a, a cross, like a So Greek I was standing cross, on a ladder with this cross above. holding the other end of the panel up. And I was like And the two of us, I mean, we were like we know nothing about construction. But so, we but did we this did. whole thing. Was, um because this is be, BC well. before children. Right. So. These are definitely before children. So when I was a little girl, I think I was four, my mom had this one teapot, and I remember sitting with her in our kitchenette, and I was just fascinated because steam came out the the chimney of this little teapot, and we had this wonderful conversation, and I just always remembered it. And then after Rich and I had this house, we started, oh, we'd go to flea markets and yard sales and antique stores and stuff like that. And every once in a while, we, we would find one, not very commonly, but maybe once a year, something like that. So I st- slowly started collecting them, but it was pretty minimal. And then in the 90s, I discovered eBay, which was my ruination. <laughs> I don't know. But so then I, I learned that there were different potteries in England and that England, because there were all these colonies, so Canada and New Zealand and Australia and different countries um, had this kind of cottageware. They would, they would buy it. And they were, now they were listing them on eBay. And so I started collecting them really just one at a time. It wasn't like a whole set. And it always felt like a, like a real coup to me when I could kind of find another piece that was part of one of the sets uh, that I had. And for a while, it felt like almost every few days I was getting another package from one of these countries. And it, it, was, it was really fun. Um, and so over time, uh, we built these shelves. And later we had um, this, this, uh, all these cabinets built in. And I was, I was filling them up. I finally had to just stop. I just had to say enough and uh, go cold turkey on on my collection here. And we're not sure what we can take to our new house. I mean, I'm really not sure how much will fit, but I'll definitely keep this original one and maybe maybe one shelf of them, something like that. So even though there were lots of really great things that happened in this house and it really was a place for a lot of creativity and joy and fun and laughter. There also were some things that happened here that weren't so terrific. And they, they, these happened fairly early on when our, in our living here, I would say within the first six, seven years. Yeah, our six kids years. were little, I yeah. think, in both of these. Right. So in one... The, fr- it, the earlier one. The earlier one, it was like a really hot night and we were asleep, fairly scantily clad because it was really hot. We had a fan going, mm-hmm. and it, we were asleep. Alex was asleep next door to us. Uh-huh. In the... it, it was July. It, it was yeah. July sometime, early July, and it uh, suddenly there was a uh, honking outside, and we woke like really up loud, really loud, really, really very loud. Insistent. And there was this bright light outside our bedroom window, and I looked out the out, outside, and, and there's a fire outside. You said there's a fire, fire and I said where? 
and you said our house. So we went, we went downstairs, and I went to the front door, and the the porch was ablaze. We we called the fire department. We got Alex, our baby, downstairs, and we and went out we, one of the other doors. I think we went out this door, and the fire. So we went came. around to the what to the porch, and well, he uh, said the fireman said. After a little well, bit, we wait, got wait, out the firemen the weren't there yet. The <laughs> firemen weren't there yet. I went around to the side, and there was a, a woman there, and she said, yeah. I was honking the horn. We passed by. Your house was on fire. Where's the fire hose? And I went, and I showed her, and we got the fire hose, and I turned it on. We started spraying the fire from underneath the porch to get the fire out. And at that time, the, the fire, by that time, the fire trucks had arrived. And the firemen eventually said to us, we got the fires out. And we said, Fires? fires? And they said yes. There were little. There were there was kindling and little blazes by all six parts of the porch and all the different doors. Because the house has porches around different three sides. of the sides, two of the sides. So apparently, whoever set the fires had set them to all the different entries. Um, so, but unfortunately, then, they didn't go up in a blaze, but they were right. So. And this woman, she said. So she was hugging. We were so appreciative because we wouldn't have woken up. And it was really only because we had fans, not air conditioning. Um, but then she said, well, there was this guy who was kind of watching the fire from our next, next door. door. Neighbor's there house. was a doghouse there and he was kind of by the doghouse. And she said it was kind of weird because this was like at 1 a.m. And he was just wearing maroon shorts, right. remember, right. and no shoes and no top. So... And she said he sort of had to be local because he's not wearing, you know, he couldn't have walked all that far. And then she said something like, actually, I think I remember this guy. He looks really familiar. And it turned out that she worked at GBH. As a continuity. Um, like an editor. Uh, editor continuity, continuity editor. editor. And she had like a really good visual memory. And she eventually she said, I think this guy was in my homeroom at Newton North. North. Yeah. So they identified him. Yeah. He uh, lived... It was a neighbor, uh, the son of a house up the street of an old family. Uh, and this had this was a grandson of a, a fairly eminent doctor who had lived up there, who was long gone. But the family, I guess, was up there. But the guy was and, a little unsettled. Um, he, was a, he was a little different. And uh, so they brought him in. Yes, eventually the magistrates the, called him in. and To the police station. Sure, because this was a case of arson. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, he said, yes, he was out walking. Yes, he was wearing ma maroon was shorts. Walking, yes, he, he was in the neighborhood. Yes, he saw the fire. Uh, but not but, that he said it. But there was no way that it could be proven that. Uh, but he, you know, and he was, I never saw him again in the neighborhood. Except that apparently he went to the police station a number of oh, times, right? right. right yes. To ask them about... Had the crime been solved and had they found anybody, which they never did. But the thing is, we were trying to figure out, like, why, what did he have against us? Like, what had gone on? And the only connection that we could come up with is that it's a series of events. But the day before this happened, the local newspaper came out with a story picturing us in our kitchen, which had just been redone, and the story about us being part of homeowners who were fixing uh, in the Trying area. Trying to restore their restore houses. Restore Victorian houses, blah, 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 blah. And, and before that, I had been out in the yard, because we're very active gardeners, and I was up front, and this guy walks down the street, and he's got two dogs, not on a leash, and the dogs are wandering all over, and one is wandering on the lawn, and I'm trying to build a garden here. And I said, get your dog uh, get your dogs off our property. I was peremptory about it. So as best uh, we can tell, as best we can tell, that, that was the reason. That was because he was, you know, that was his dog, either Lucky or Licky. I couldn't, but I remember <laughs> that may him, have been one of each. Yeah, Lucky I could have. Lucky. I remember him walking yeah. around calling Licky, right. Licky. Okay, so this is another animal story, actually, as I think about it. So we ate here at this table all the time. And for a while, again, this was maybe a few years after the other thing happened. For a while, we were kind of hearing heavy breathing. And scratching noises. And scratching noises. In the walls. Like. Somewhere in the walls. 
And we talked to each other, said, you know, should we do something? Like, what do you think it is? We had no idea. And we so, sort of hoped it would yeah, go right. away. We hoped it wouldn't go away. So we mentioned we it had it. gone away. We right. just ignored it. Right. But then it kept going. So finally, we called an exterminator. You did, yeah. I called an exterminator. And the exterminator came over. And he's looking at this kitchen. And <laughs> he's, he looks around. And at this point... Somehow we figured that the, if, if there was, was an animal, it was in this wall, in this chimney. chimney. And there was a chimney flue up there, which was covered with a pie plate. And the guy uh, looks it's around. Behind, it's behind this. It's behind that picture. Haitian it's painting. just a circular opening. And at that point, it just had a pie plate. And the guy looks around the kitchen like this, and he's going, he's looking at all these things we have. And he goes, oh, lady, you got problems. Because he's picturing a squirrel or something coming out and like running all around and like destroying everything we had here. But the thing was that this exterminator wouldn't guarantee that he would actually get rid of the animal. So we didn't hire him. But a few days later, we're still realizing there's something going on. Something in the walls. So I call the guy again and I'm on the phone with him. I'm kind of standing over here and I'm saying that we still... There's something still going on here. Yeah. I wasn't at home. Richard was, I was, Richard I was, was not work. at home. Our baby, we think now this may have been Jared at this yeah. point, is upstairs. And I am on the phone and I'm looking at that pie plate. And all of a sudden I see the thing move. I see the pie plate like moves over like this. And I start screaming and I'm expecting like a little, I don't know, like a little paw to come out. And I'm screaming on the phone, ah, it's moving, don't leave me, please help me. I am, I am absolutely screaming. And this pie plate moves and I'm waiting for the paw to come out. And But what happens, eventually a little beak comes out. This little beak shows up behind it and then the pie plate keeps moving. And eventually a bird, this black bird, I don't even know what it was. I thought it was a crow, but Richard tells me the crow is way bigger. I don't know, but it, it was, was pretty probably big. a starling. Maybe a starling, but <laughs> comes out and starts like flying around the kitchen. I had the presence of mind to at least close the door over here. And like, it's like batting into the window. It's doing all this stuff. Anyway, eventually I actually managed to get it to go out that door over there and to go outside and we think we're done. Like it was horrible. You know, I was like totally traumatized. Right. So, a, but we a think a day it's or gone. two later, we we no still smell. It, the, we're still the, the noise occurs, the, and then it's quiet, very yeah. quiet, for several days. Yeah. And at the time, we had tenants in the building, and the 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 tenant in this case was a young couple, and he had been a naturalist. He was he was actually in a, Montana. A, in Montana, he was a bird illustrator did wonderful beautiful drawings and one day he came downstairs and he said there's a smell in the house and it's and it's flesh it's dying animal in the house and he was and he left i mean he was just telling you <laughs> like, so, nice to know so <laughs> you know but that's what your that's what your issue is so so the two of us <laughs> trying to figure say, out what do we what do, do we now because we have like, a dead animal somewhere. And, and we know it's not the bird. There's yet the, another animal. animal. So it was a process of about a day or two to figure out where it was, because it, it yes. is in this general area, because the, the buildings around a flue, there's actually a hollow space between the walls and, and, the, and the chimney. And so it's a whole area where animals can run up and down. So, and it, we weren't sure where it was because the house, when it was built, had had an elevator. So there's an elevator shaft, more or less, in the building. And so we're going on sniffing everywhere. And finally, I thought we had yeah. located it in the wall of the elevator. Which is right behind Which here. Which is right it's behind here. It's on the here. other side Actually, here. right behind here. <laughs> so... So and, my brave husband. So I, I had a, a saw, a hand saw, and I just took it to the because it's a wooden shaft. So I took it to the wooden shaft across, and it's butt butt edged wood. So I could go up here, and I went down below, and I and could side. and I could pry out this panel of like about that big, 
And <laughs> sure enough, <laughs> what I see first as I pry it. And I am standing right behind him. We is, tried to is cheer this him on. Sort of ratty uh, fur. It is a raccoon. And, and it was and it was a quite dead raccoon. Like upside down. Upside down. So you know, it had gone down and, and like it just couldn't back down. up. And, it, it was great. It was Bad. grotesque because it, he was not only dead and uh, in there in a couple of days, but he was always also caught on a a, a, a pipe, a, a hot water pipe. <laughs> this doesn't do good so things. It was quite foul. So, but Richard, I, we opened the wall, and then we got had a, a black bag, paper, a, a black, black plastic, plastic bag, bag with gloves. <laughs> I took it and. Immediately put it in the black plastic bag, put it in, chuck it put outside. Put it in another black bag, two black plastic bags. Put it outside. Yeah. And we think we're done. We think we're done. So <laughs> that was out there, and, and it stank. It was terrible. It took us weeks and weeks to get the smell out of the house. But here's but, the creepy thing. The, the creepy thing. So the bag is outside. The following morning, <laughs> the bag is gone. We go like outside. we left the bag. The there. bag isn't where it was. <laughs> and and I, it was like, so I walked, the place. I walked slightly walked around, around the garden, and there was the bag and the animals. And we think some other animal, animal. like actually took it, like that it was an attractive smell. I don't know what. Well, it could have been but... dinner. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, I took the bag again, wrapped it up, put it in the garbage pail. That was the end that of that story. It. That's but the end this of the was animal like when story. People have, when people have stories about animals in their house, we always say, oh, let us tell you. Yeah. We got right. one. We used to love doing different cooking projects with the kids. In fact, we had different aprons for our daughter, Alex, and we just gave them to our grandchildren. All three of them had different aprons of different size. But one of the things that I am known for is making banana and nut pancakes with our grandchildren. So we used to spend a fair amount of time here. And then a very funny story when our granddaughter was maybe a year, a little more than a year old. She was fascinated by all these, like we realized we could sort of um, have her play with all these plastic containers and stuff like that. It, you know, they're not breakable. But what we realized is she would immediately go over and start pulling these things out. But so we had, I was on this side with her and Richard would be on that side. And as she would pull them out, he would put them back in on the other side and then she would just take them out round around round again and she never quite figured it out that we were doing that it's great <laughs> so one of the things that we remember that was like we were pretty proud of it is that our house was on a house tour in fact we think it might have been on two house tours and one of the things i'm thinking about is we use this as our front door having like a thousand people over the time that it was on this tour, come through that door, walk through our house, and they didn't know that we were the owners of the house. And we were here. And we were here. We decided we would be here for the tour. So they're, you know, they're looking and they're like, gee, I wonder where they got that chandelier. Or, that doesn't fit with the house or whatever. And we were here. But then one of the funniest stories is that somebody came downstairs. I think Jared at that point was maybe 10 or 10 11. Or 11. And somebody came downstairs and he said, you know, your son is giving these very detailed tours of all of the upstairs rooms and what the history is of them. So we, and we thought, didn't know that he was, you know, even cognizant of that. So that, yeah, was, that was, was really great. That was really nice. But this room was uh, another one of the rooms we spent a lot of time uh, doing up, uh, particularly Ellen spent a lot of had a lot of time that she spent here she did the stenciling yeah, she not so. only did the stenciling she cut the stencils she made the stencils mm. cut the stencils and then um was up there you on had a to ladder align them it was hard so uh, this room the dining room is where we had our thanksgivings and, so, and dinner parties and dinner parties and we would have and sometimes we'd serve it as a buffet we have a lot of a lot of people in the house because the house is wonderfully open if you open all the doors it's just it's this great big circle of space so people could go into any number of rooms and this table expands and we could sit 12 at the table and we had we sometimes have had on one of my birthdays i think we had like 80 people here oh in the house yeah. yes yeah so, so it was it's uh it's been a, just a wonderful house to have, have, be hospitable in yeah and wonderful about the house are these pocket doors which 
squeaky, but there they are. They're beautiful. And there's one over here, and you could originally the house could be closed off in different ways and opened in different ways. What's particularly wonderful is that the main rooms in the house on the first floor are all oak. If there's wood, it's all oak, except the living room. The living room was cherry. And so these doors have oak on this side and cherry on the other. And they're just, they're just beautiful pieces of furniture. So we're rolling? How are we doing? We're rolling. Okay, okay good. This is our living room. Um, and again, it's another one of those big rooms. When the house was built, it was actually two rooms. There was there had been yes. a wall like here. here, not when we owned the house, but there had been a wall here originally, and probably with another pocket door. And another. It had been taken down, but uh, and when we first bought the house, but before we had moved in, before we'd passed papers on it, I remember think we were trying to like make little you know diagrams of of the house, and we couldn't remember we couldn't figure how what shape was, was put this. Together. And it turns out it's it's really an S shape because yeah. It, sort of swiggles in a strange way and it winds up being a turret or a round end. So, I mean, this is another kind of route. We travel a fair amount and we like to go to fairs and museums and things. And so the house has afforded us a place to, you know, find <laughs> things that we love to look at and, and then use them. If like, we can purchase them, we find a place for them here in our house. So everything like that we have up is like, Sort of stories behind them. Oh, that's from, oh, wasn't that from, oh, yes, I used to have that. Or we, right. and that picture is from an art teacher we knew and who we took a class, class with. with. On so the cave. it's been. But the, we have several quilts actually that we got in flea markets, whatever. And a lot of the Killeem, like on this side over here, um, were from one, our yeah. honeymoon. Right. Um, that we we had traveled for a month in Greece and a month in Turkey, and when we were in Turkey, we bought these different kalim and then had to figure out how to get them back. Um, right. But we did. Right. And then later, your dad left you some money, and we used it to buy some other rugs and lamps. Um, this chair was my grandfather's that we had recovered, and this end table, our daughter Alex. Um, she did this finishing. She she did this pretty creative top to it, um, which we love. The idea for us is really to build spaces that are fun to come into and fun to look at, and most importantly, fun to be in. And fun to be and in with our family, our our kids, and our grandkids, and our parents when right. they were alive, and right. and my sister and brother-in-law, and right. lots of friends. You know, we just have so many memories of so many times of having right. different sets of friends and different combinations right. over here. So in this end of the living room, at one point we decided, well, how to work with this space because it's, it's unusual. And I designed this set of cabinets and up above are some of our bird cages and there are some hanging in the window. These are particularly old. These are from early, this one and this one in the corner, it's hard to see, are probably from the 1840s uh, tin. And this one and that one, and then there are three others in the window, are brass. And they're all made by uh, a bird cage company called Hendrix. And I started collecting them. I don't know why, I was just fascinated by them. So we have like maybe 14, 14, and here are um, well, there are Five four. Six, Here are seven. seven, and then there are seven more upstairs in other rooms in the house. Originally, this house, which was built in 1889 and 1890, somewhere in there, um, this was the front door. This was the front door, so people would come in on this side. Um, and at that time, you know, I think the people who owned this house were fairly well-to-do. And so people would come in and they would be here. They would sit here until they were received. So they might have a calling card or something like that. And I don't know, probably a servant would 
go and get the people from the house, but they would be sitting here. And the other things to point out here are, first of all, this really nice uh, fireplace and, and mantelpiece, but this is the collection I was mentioning just before. These are all cast iron doorstops, and I realized a lot of the first ones that we got were these houses. <laughs> they were little houses. By the time we bought this house, it had been converted to a two-family, actually. And that's why there's, this here was actually another door, but we didn't need that. So we made it into a bookcase and our granddaughter Dahlia now loves playing. Like, so she makes this like an apartment building. So these are, you know, these little stick figures. Um, so she, like sometimes it's a hospital, sometimes it's an apartment building. It could be all different things. This was Alex's room, which she loved because it was round. Her crib was against that wall. And then when the two kids had yeah. the room, they, there were two twin beds. And then, and then we stacked them bed. as a, as a yeah. bunk bed. And then... And Alex reminded me the other day that like when it was just her room and she was scared, she would knock on that wall because our room was on the, the other, other side. side. We had and told we her if, not, we, if, if you're if worried, if you're just scared. Just knock on the wall, we'll come in. Yep. We, or so, we would just not right, back the right, way. Right. Mm -hmm. But then her changing table was on this window, and she would stand up, and she could see out at the Jared window. Jared, too. Jared, too, and they yeah. would, could look out. That's north, and you can see the hills of uh, Waltham, where uh, um, uh, Brandeis is. So we Because would, they went to daycare at, at the daycare at Brandeis, so they could actually see the place was yeah. called Lembert, and they yeah. could see, see it there. from this from window. There. And the other thing that was great is that there's there's the highway there, but then there's also train tracks. So in changing them, there would always be like something going on that would divert them. They would be <laughs> whereas other people would be very annoyed that they lived on the turnpike <laughs> or near the turnpike. We sort of made, right. we made, it into made a lemonade feature. out of it, and it was good. Yeah, and the house is. The house is so solidly built that when the windows are closed, you can't hear anything from the outside. So the house has been, yeah, house it's just been a wonderful well place. Just the work. other thing, Alex loved that the room was round and she loved like having this green round rug that she would do different projects. She would make it into her lawn or whatever. She had these, her favorite stuffed animals were over here. Um, and she reminded me that she did one project where she turned it into a rainforest and she had little plants around here. So she used it well. Yeah. This is where we veg out. So this room, although it's kind of messy, um, it really has been like our everything room. Um, so um, yeah, we hang out here at night watching TV, TV, but it's also our study. This is also our, our grandkids our tea, play here. Our tea party room. <laughs> uh, they come here and they set up the tea party. Yes, yeah, sometimes um, on the floor, sometimes here. When our kids were learning to walk and our grandkids were learning to walk, they'd they hold on to this and, and, and walk around it. I was saying to you a minute ago, I think our son, Jared, had every room but this one as his bedroom at one time or another. He went from, there may maybe four other bedrooms here. He used all of them at different times, but right. not And sometimes so he would come crawl out of bed and bring his pillow and blanket and just lie on the rug in the hallway. And in the morning we would find him, um, he would find him asleep on so the rug. the hallway as well. Uh, he was more parapetetic. Yeah, yeah. He, was um, a, he was a great, he was a great kid. Although he didn't sleep through the night till he was two. Oh yes. Our daughter, after a few weeks slept through the night, we thought, we thought all kids were like that. And then Jared, who was three years younger, I don't think he slept through the night till he was three. Yeah. So it was like 
the law of averages is maybe good. But Every, if he would wake up like clockwork at three o'clock. Yeah, like, and we'd have to hold get him. him back to sleep. And then he'd come into our bed with us and and lie sideways, like butting into us. With right, his head. that's right. Right, not like his sisters. Right. Yeah, we have painted photographs of Venice there from the uh, late nineteenth century, and then there's a modern. Uh, print a serograph by uh, McKnight, Thomas McKnight. That's uh, been the fun. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. been a it's been a great house to live in. Yeah. I mean, it's been it's been so much of our life, and I think what I would say is that it was it's a it's another I don't know like a source of creativity for us, and and really like a joy to to put it together to create it. This house has been. A reflection of who we are maybe more than a lot of people with their houses for us this was really a palette it was a way to create kind of I don't know it sounds hokey but like like it's sort of like a living artwork right and with it with that we put together the colors the way we arrange stuff the just the feel of it mm -hmm. I think yeah um, you were saying also that's the way our garden is or has been um, very intense, very intense, very colorful, varied, with yeah. attention to texture and and, and design, and, design yeah. and, uh, and 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 bloom. So yeah. it's not unlike our the inside of our house. So we're ready to go on to another space, but we feel like this has been so important to us in our lives, like really a source of. A lot of satisfaction and a, just a lot of living here of us and our kids and our grandkids. Um, our kids grew up here from when they were born till when they went away to college, and and uh, you know now having our grandkids here as well. It's just been it's really important to us, and I think um, this whole idea of doing this project even is a way to I don't know create a tribute um, to to our life here and and to our to this house and, and what house, it yeah. meant to us yeah we have a great deal of affection for it yeah um, as i think you could tell <laughs> so thank you